Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, the state of Arizona, we've talked about it at length over the past few months on this channel, and as the general election seems to be ramping up, it seems as if a lot of the great and wonderful candidates that we worked so hard to get over the hump in the primary are poised for a clean sweep in the state this fall, according to recent polling, and they are surging compared to where they were, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when they were surging then, and Republicans keep hammering home the messaging, the America first messaging in the state of Arizona. You have a lot of great candidates. Democrats, on the other hand, they're dropping the ball completely. Katie Hobbs, Mark Kelly, etc. And they are poised for defeat in November at the rate that we are going. So we are going to dive into it and look at some of these polls and analyze why they show that Republicans are poised for a victory. But first, I have to tell you guys about our latest sponsor over at the Epic Times. So what is the Epic Times? The Epic Times brings you break U.S. and world news on all your devices and original Epic TV programs like popular podcasts and award-winning documentaries. Why do we trust the Epic Times? They report important news and facts that other media ignore. They focus on clear fact-based journalism without spin or hidden agendas so you can arrive at your own conclusions. Despite the attacks from many sides and the defamation from other media, the Epic Times continue to dedicate themselves to reporting the truth. So give them a try. We would think you'd like it. We have a special offer for our viewers here. One dollar for two months. So go to epictime.es slash Red Eagle and subscribe. The link is in the pinned comment and the description down below. So like I said yesterday, I'm very confident Arizona is shaping up to be a clean red sweep. That would mean Republicans would sweep all of the competitive congressional races, but also they would sweep all of the statewide races that are supposed to be competitive as well. That includes the governorship, that includes the Senate seat there that is currently held by Democrat Mark Kelly, who votes with Biden close to 99% of the time as well as the Secretary of State position, which is currently held by nutjob Katie Hobbs, uh, as well as the Attorney General uh, race there, which is currently held by weak Republican Mark Burnovich, who ran for the Senate race and got completely decked because he was lazy and nobody liked him. So beyond that point, we sit here today. We sit here today approximately 50 days away from the midterms. And Republicans are in the lead. Carrie Lake is defeating Katie Hobbs in this latest poll by four and a half percentage points. Not only that, she is above 50%. And you might say, well, Trafalgar has leaned a little bit to the right in Arizona. Well, if you want to take the error and apply it to this race that we saw in 2020 uh, in the Trafalgar poll, well, apparently Carrie Lake would still be in the lead. And she's at 50% in this poll. Katie Hobbs in every poll tends to be down in the mid 40s. And this is a common recurring theme. And it speaks volumes because in the latest Trafalgar poll, Lake was only up by like a point. It was a virtual tie. Now, Lake apparently is nearing being outside of the margin of error. And this is after Katie Hobbs has decided she would not debate. This is just Katie Hobbs going on and trying to do the Terry McAuliffe strategy where you try to paint your opponent as some like right wing, you know, QAnon, whatever. It doesn't work. It never works. It's not accurate. Carrie Lake is a great candidate. She's very good on the issues. Her border policy is amazing. And furthermore, she's very articulate. She's very charismatic. She's a folk hero. She's been a folk hero in the state for a while because she was a celebrity and a lot of people knew her from media. So all these attacks like, oh, she's crazy, this, that, and the other thing. She had a decently high popularity rating uh, with the general public when she was in media. So those attacks are going to bounce off more so for her than it would pretty much anybody else. And for this governor's election, Katie Hobbs is somebody that's got a lot of skeletons in her closet, has basically said that all Trump voters are fascists and Nazis in the past. Uh, and either way, it's not going to pan out too well in a swing state. And everybody that likes to you know, say that Carrie Lake was unelectable, she could never win the primary, they're being proven wrong in real time because not only is she in the driver's seat for this election, there's a very good chance she wins by a likely margin. There's a very good chance at the end of the day, Carrie Lake wins by seven or eight percentage points or so, which is astounding that these people were worried about nominating her instead of somebody like gold digger neocon Karen Taylor Robson, who probably uh, Katie Hobbs would have debated because Robson is a total robot. I'm not saying that Robson would have lost to Katie Hobbs, 
But the notion that Robson was like miles better uh, than Lake in terms of electability, it's completely wrong. And when Lake wins by a decently wide margin, these people, the loser right, the basement caucus, the elector bros, they will be proven wrong. But either way, our main target right here right now is the Democrat opposition for November. And Carrie Lake is a great candidate and she is in the driver's seat right now to win, which is big news. And that's what matters. And it's not just Carrie Lake. Uh, we'll get to Blake Masters in a minute. Uh, but Mark Fincham, they said Mark Fincham was so far right. They call him an election denier. They say he has zero chance to win. Even a lot of Republicans, even Republicans on, you know, our, our side, you could even say were worried about his electability. I was a little bit worried because he's very controversial. I still support the guy, I supported him in the primary, but he is very controversial. And I was wondering if he would, uh, be able to be elected in November. And apparently, he has a massive lead. <laughs> He's up by uh, 6.4 percentage points. He's almost a 50% over Adrian Fontes, who is a total train wreck. Uh, he is somebody that's a very shady individual, in my opinion. And he is down significantly to Mark Fincham, which speaks volumes because Mark Fincham has been under scrutiny by a lot of people. There's been a lot of negative attack ads that are, you know, being thrown his way because he's very controversial because he's a fighter. But either way, it doesn't matter because Mark Fincham appears poised for victory. Not only that, he's outperforming Kerry Lake and he's outperforming Blake Masters, which is really saying something. And he shocked the world in the primary when he won by the margin that he won by. I honestly believe that Fincham's margin of victory will surprise a lot of people at the end of the day, given how controversial he is. And in real time, it disproves the notion that Arizona is a neocon state. Like I've said, uh, America First and MAGA Republicans have a very high floor there. You could even argue that maybe that their ceiling is a little bit lower uh, than past like neocons that would face zero opposition from the Arizona Democrat Party or whatever. You could make that argument, but either way, the tides are turning. Arizona is going to be an America first state after this fall. And when Kerry Lake gets in there, Mark Fincham gets in there, and Abe Hamada gets in there, he has a massive lead. He leads by nine percentage points. He's at 50% over Chris Mays. When all of these candidates get in there, you will see what is happening to Florida right now, but on steroids in the state of Arizona, a state that so desperately needs to be saved from becoming another California, from becoming another Colorado, because this is the turning point right here, this election. And you have the best Republican slate in the entire nation, and they are poised for victory, which is absolutely huge. And you have Hamada, who will be one of the best, if not the best AGs in the country with a nine-point lead. Mark Fincham, election integrity hawk, uh, is very, very right-wing. He has a massive lead in the Secretary of State's race. And Carrie Lake is opening up a sizable lead. She is running away with it as we speak. She's at 50%. If you're at 50, you can't lose. I'll tell you that much. And even if we say that Trafalgar is overestimating her, it doesn't matter because polls this far out typically underestimate Republicans in the state of Arizona. Uh, there was a time when Biden was defeating Trump in the aggregate in the state uh, at this point by like around, what, five to seven points or so. Mark Kelly had a 12-point lead over incumbent Martha McSally. Uh, which was saying something. But now Mark Kelly and Blake Masters are in a virtual tie, which really speaks volumes. And I don't know if the Libertarian is going to take home 3% at the end of the day either. Uh, that's definitely an issue that, you know, Masters is going to have to overcome. And I believe he will overcome. But either way, we look at a race like Pennsylvania's Senate race and Trafalgar pulled the Libertarian. They were getting like 4%. I don't think that that will stay that high. Third party votes uh, tend to be lower than third-party candidates do in polls. Every single election cycle, this is a common recurring theme. A lot of those libertarian voters will likely end up going home to Blake Masters. A lot of the undecided voters could very well go home to Blake Masters, and that will help Blake Masters defeat Mark Kelly. Blake Masters is finally getting funding uh, in his race. He's definitely going to see a surge because of that. Mark Kelly has been spending a lot of money. He's been airing a lot of negative ads against Blake Masters, but the personal attacks don't matter. They keep coming, but it's not changing anything. Blake Masters is only down by a point, and the last poll had him down by four, and this is before the funding. And after this, what are you going to see? You're probably going to see Masters do better down the stretch because, like I said, Masters 
had an upward trajectory as the primary cycle went on. Uh, Mark Kelly had a downward trajectory the way that 2020 went on in the general election cycle. I think you're going to see Masters take the lead in the polling. And even like Emerson and some other like election mafia polls, they tend to have Masters within the margin of error too. And that is before the spending dump. If you're Mark Kelly, you got to be very worried right now. If you're Katie Hobbs, you know, she's going to be in a whole lot of trouble, especially because she's not going to be debating. She's not well liked. Democrats don't like her. Independents don't like her. Republicans don't like her. It is crazy. In terms of the Democrats for the Secretary of State and the AG's races, I mean, they could be in a whole lot of trouble come election night. And Republicans that want to see changes to the electoral system, they're going to be the ones to turn out. Carrie Lake did a very good job of galvanizing those voters in the primary, which again, she was criticized for. And I said the criticism is all for nothing because she is going to win by a decent margin. She apparently seems on track to do so. But beyond that point, uh, it does seem as if galvanizing the core base in the state in the primary and then pivoting effectively to the general election is a winning strategy for Republicans, and they are going to take Arizona. It's going to be a clean sweep. You want to talk about the congressional races? You know, it's looking as if you will see Siskamani win easily, Crane will win easily. Uh, obviously, you're going to have Biggs, Gosar, and Lesko in there. And altogether, you are going to see the most conservative uh, delegation for Congress of any state. You're going to see them have the arguably the best governor in the country, one of the best senators in the country. You're going to see them have the best secretary of state in the country, arguably the best attorney general in the country. Arizona is coming back this fall. The red wave is hitting Arizona. It's going to hit it hard. You talk about the map. We tend to do this in a lot of videos. What areas need to be the areas of focus? Well, obviously, Maricopa County, because of the shift in the national environment, I think Maricopa is going to flip. I think with what's going on at the border, you're going to see even more Republican gains in places like Yuma County. I think that the Republicans are going to max out places like Pinal, Prescott, which is up in Yavapai. They're going to do well there, or continue the trends in a place like Mojave County. All around Arizona, I think nearly every county is going to shift right. And in such a close state, that is going to be enough to give the state uh, away back to the Republicans and they could stop the nightmare of the Grand Canyon state and make sure that it's a red state for the end of the decade and more and make sure that Donald J. Trump will have a state party that is strong, that is backing him and that will support him in a key swing state that he'll flip back in the 2024 election. So this is big, big news. This is big time stuff. Hopefully the momentum can continue. But right now, Republicans have the momentum. I don't want to hear any more dooming. We'll talk about some other elections in some other states later this week. We'll do some more videos. But Arizona had to do a video, another one on Arizona because of these recent polls that dropped. And it's just a massive development. I'm very excited for this fall, but you can't get too complacent either. You got to get out and vote if you live in Arizona. Can't forget that. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video, and follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.